Today, I'd like to talk to you about the alternative to Mac 3, the series, and today it's about the spindle encoder. So I've ordered the encoder, it's arrived and it's a Omron B6C2-CWZ1X, 5 volts DC, 1000 pulses per rev. If you looked at the MPEG pendant video I've just put up, that's got 100 pulses per rev. This has got 1000. And as I said in that video, that type of accuracy is no good for an MPEG. Too fine, too many pulses. But for a spindle encoder to know where it is at any moment in time, the more the merrier. This is also a you know, 422. Everyone knows seeing the require is a 422, you know, the signal up like that. So I'll just unbox it for you and we'll see what's in here. Okay, here's the instructions again. Yep, dimensions and all that wiring. And I'll just slide her out. Oh look! <laughs> and I lucky! They even supplied the mounting brackets. <laughs> nah, not quite. This come fairly early because it was purchased locally and I got to and I had ordered a bearing and that came fairly quick so I manufactured up the bracket. So here's the, the encoder, cabling, again it's got the A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus, wires, 5 volt, 0 and 5 volt plus and the ground. I thought it'd be better to show you what's required and why I designed it like this. You have your spindle, your chuck, you have your spindle, have a pulley, you have your motor. Now the lathe's just got an old V-belt so it can be spinning around at a thousand revs and the spindle can be spinning around a thousand revs, one to one. And then you can take a cut and you wind it in and go Rrr! The motor will still spin but the pulley belt might slip. Imagine if you were threading, you've gone okay I'll start here now it's moving one rev, just say it's a one millimeter pitch, it's moving one millimeter per rev. All of a sudden it slowed down but it doesn't know. So your thread will be variable pitch over, over the one length. So then you need to be able to get a reading of the spindle. You can have an index and that's one switch on, on, on. Oh, so that's spinning. So what that does, it says, okay, it was one second since the last one. Oh, it's 0.9, I better speed up. Oh, it's 1.1, I better slow down. So it then adjusts for every on, on, on. When you get an encoder, I think max went up to maximum of four or six or eight slots. So that's, that's the best you could do. So with this 1,000 pulses, it's on, 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 like that. If you're moving a millimetre, it's 1,000th of a millimetre, it knows where it is. It's a bit more accurate. So then your pulley slows down, and it's not one millimetre or one rev before it can alter it. It's 1,000th of a millimetre, 1,000th of 360 degrees. That will help your threads become a bit more accurate, in theory. If your machine's crap, your machine's crap. It's got a quarter shaft, six mil shaft. You have your big pulley, you have a, you hold up your headstock, put your bar in, it may be 25 mil, maybe 30 mil. Mine's I think about 26, something like that. I think you can just slip a bit of one inch bar in there. So how do you attach it? You can make up a plug, a bung, and shove that on the end of your spindle and have your shaft hanging off that. But then you would only be able to put your stock in through the front of the chuck and pull it out from the chuck. Doable, but not the best idea. So therefore you have to have a pulley system to drive. So your encoder has a pulley and your spindle has a pulley. If you open up the back of your headstock and take the guard off, you'll see you'll have maybe a 4 inch or 5 inch pulley 
and bearings and housings and all this sort of stuff, which means that to make up a pulley, it needs to be that size already. So we'll just say 100 mil for round figures. So you make up a pulley, XL pulley, 100 millimeters. Now you've got a little six mil shaft on here. So you have your one, and you think, okay, I'll just put a little spin, a little pulley on there. And we'll say we'll put a 20 mil one. And let's just say the ratio is five to one then. So if you lave those 2000 revs, this little bugger is doing 2000 by five, 10,000 revs. And how many pulses has it got? <laughs> a thousand. So you got 2000 by five by 1000. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. Then there's a second problem. There's usually only 250 and then they pick the rising and the dropping edge and the receding edge and all that. So they really multiply by four. Then there's also a Z index mark, so one point. It's supposed to be this mark here. But it, in the manuals, it shows it up being vertical. I have to check that and find out where it is. So then you say, right, five to one, but that means your index pulse for one rev of your spindle, you've got five indexing pulses. So how does your software know, oh, there's five pulses instead of one? So that also causes problems. So therefore, you need a one index pulse per rev of your spindle, which is fine. You can have it on the motor, but we're only talking stepper drivers and normal AC motors, no, nothing too fancy. So that means that to have one index pulse per rev, your ratio has to be one to one. One turn of the spindle is one turn of your encoder. And as we said before, we'll just use 100 mil as a diameter for the spindle pulley. You then have to have a 100 mil diameter pulley on your encoder, that little quarter shaft. That little shaft, run out, all that sort of stuff. So that's where you have to put your designer's cap on and do a bit of thinking. So to reduce the cross loads pulling on the small shaft, I then decided to put a front plate with a bearing on it. You can see the bearing in there. You could have a little tiny bearing that goes straight on the shaft, but it's a D shaft and I looked at the mounting of the XL pulley, all this sort of thing, I'll come to that in a moment, so that was the design. So as these photos will show, I looked up in the raw material box, found a piece of alley, cut that up to shape, milled it up, bored it out for the bearing, also bored it out for the shaft, stub diameter on the encoder. So that was just a slight sliding push fit, you know, as good as you'd have to push it in pretty hard, pretty square, and then drill the countersunk to hold it in. Then I made up the plate and alignment. So that's what that plate's for. Then on the machine, I've taken off all the gears and all that sort of thing, and there's a gear shaft, little stub gear shaft. So that fits on there, goes into the gear shaft. Pulley will be on the spindle, that big. Then that will just tilt out the way to keep the tension because you have to design it to fit within the space you've got but then also you have to be able to get the thing on it's fine saying yeah i'll put it like that and that's that center distance but then you find out how do i get the belt the belt has to go over the pulley and all that so you have to design your components to actually fit and be able to remove and install not just in the operating position i worked all that out in cad drew it up machine it up and made it so as this all pulls apart so as I can fit the belt in, fit a pulley in, fit the belt on and then nip it up. When you design brackets, items, you have to design it for the whole process. So design your first idea, then sit back, look at it and go through all the scenarios in your head. So that will fit in there. I've got to make up a screw that locked it in. What I've got laying around I use extra long length. I might even put a spring on there to keep it in tension. That's the, the spindle encoder pulley drive on the shaft, all got to be fixed. You may wonder why I wondered about the index mark. Not quite sure how well it works, but sometimes if you set up your, your thread, so you're going to thread and you tell Mac 3 you're going to start 20 mil away, okay? You start threading, bang, 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 bang. Hopefully, when you put another job in and you put it, same position, 20 mil away, start threading, 
that where it starts the thread will be in the same position on your chuck. So you would move your index mark, put a little text mark on there, and that will show you where the indexing point is. So then, let's say you're repairing a thread, it's been welded or, or something, and you need to accurately line it up. Well, if you know that when your chuck point is touching that point, that's index position zero, and then you know that if you're 20 mil away from your job that happens to be that far out, it will line perfectly at that point every time. If you're making, say, a cap, screw cap, and you want it to line up, just say you've got a, your logo on it or something. You want it so when it's tightened up, the logo is always horizontal. You could put your job in with the logo in a certain position, thread it, then you would know that when you tighten it up, the logo, the slot, the pin, whatever, lines up perfectly. So that's why it's important to me, and that's why I've put a little index mark on there when I milled it. And that's when they said that it was lining up with the, the screw there, but the index slot mark's up here, so I haven't tested it to see if it lines up. I may have to make a mark on here. On the pulley, I will 3D print those XL pulleys because one's got a special shape, and I've got marks on them. So that I can look at the back of the machine, turn it around, and line it up, and put the job in, and then check it. Design your product, think about it, think about what are the uses you can do with it. Do that at your initial design stage, build it up, and then when it's done, it will be good fun and a good versatile tool to use for different things. So if you've got any questions, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.